All right. Good morning. Today's a little bit of an experiment. Good morning. Good morning. We are live on Facebook and we're also doing the main recording for the uh, YouTube playlist channel for Tommy's Bible teachings. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have people getting on from both, both, both sites. So today's exciting. Today we're going to be in Romans chapter six. We've been continuing our study through the book of Romans. And um, last week we did chapter five. So of course this week we do chapter six, but I'm just so excited about it because there are so many cool things in chapter six. Um, we love that. Okay, they're telling me the current frame rate is too low. Please set the frame rate to 15 to 60, or viewers may experience lower quality stream. I don't know what that is, but I think it would be best if we get off my screen. All right. Anyways, let's get serious. Let's open up with a word of prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for your word and how it teaches us and guides us uh, through life. Lord, I pray that you would uh, help us to turn to your word when we need it most. Lord, we often wait as a last resort we turn to God after we try everything ourselves. Father, help us to learn to follow you and submit our lives to you and to your word. Um, Father, we ask that you teach us today from your word in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Appreciate you guys. And um, we're going to dig right into Romans chapter 6. And to do that, I'm going to catch the last two words, uh, verses of chapter 5 to get a rolling start. He said, the law was added so that the trespass might increase, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more, so that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we get eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, through the righteousness that we receive by faith, by accepting Christ at his word. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? Well, the more we sin, the more grace we receive. So why don't we just sin even more so that we can receive more grace and give more glory to God through that? Is that possible? Is that what they want? I don't think so. He says, by no means, or God forbid, we died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? How? We died to sin. When we accepted Christ's forgiveness, we died to sin. Now, we're going to stumble, we're going to sin, but we don't purposely live in a life of sin any longer. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. And we already know that he was resurrected from the dead. And that is the proof, all the proof we need, that we who believe will also be resurrected from the dead. For we know that our old self was crucified with him. Good morning, everybody. Our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died to self has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Christ. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. Now, I really like this part right here because it shares a lot 
uh, and I shared it a lot when I was uh, performing baptisms. Because if you look at what this says, we have been buried with him, we died with him to sin, and raised to life in likeness of his resurrection. So when someone is baptized, and I'm not talking about a baby being sprinkled with water, uh, that ha he's making no choice of his own, his parents are doing that. Truly, that is more of a, a baby dedication or the parents dedicating the baby to Christ and committing to raise the child as a Christian. But that is not truly a baptism biblically. In baptism, you have to be old enough to make the decision for yourself that you want to be baptized. You accept Jesus and baptism is an outward sign of an inward change. And that's why people invite friends and family to come see them get baptized. The same reason we invite friends and family to come see us get married. You could go to the justice of the peace with one witness for the law and be just as legally married as if you had a great big giant wedding with hundreds and hundreds of witnesses. It doesn't make you any more legally married. And a huge baptism ceremony doesn't make you any more saved. But we do it to tell everybody before our friends, family, and God that I'm committing to marry this person, to love this person, to live with this person. And this baptism is the same. We are committing publicly to live for Christ for the rest of our days, to the best of our ability. That's why when we go under the water, not a sprinkling, when we go under the water, we are being buried in the likeness of his burial and his death and his burial in the tomb, we're, we're going down into the grave. And then we are raised up out of the water in the likeness of his resurrection. We are raised to newness of life. Now we will truly receive newness of life once we die, or those of us that are left are raptured, and we live eternally with Christ Jesus. But right now, baptism is an outward sign of an inward change. It doesn't save you. you. You're saved when you're saved. You don't have to get baptized to go to heaven. Anybody that tells you that is lying. You have to be saved by faith in what Jesus did on the cross. He told the other crook on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. There's no chance that guy had time to get down off the cross, run down to the water, get baptized, come back over and get renailed to the cross so that he could go to heaven. Jesus took him to heaven with him. Baptism is very important. It's very important to do. If you've never been baptized as an adult, yes, maybe your parents baptized you as a child. If you've never chosen to publicly profess your faith in Christ by being baptized as an adult, buried with him in the likeness of his death, raised with him in the likeness of his resurrection, is something you should seriously consider. Now, we've been buried with him in the likeness of his death, raised with him in the likeness of his resurrection. So verse 11 tells us, in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Be dead to sin. Be done with it. But count yourself alive in Christ Jesus to God. God sees you now as a child of God, as a brother in Christ, as a sister in Christ, as his child in Christ, because we are only saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. Then he says, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires, but instead do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who've been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. In other words, use your hand, use your feet, use your brain, use your mouth to be instruments of righteousness, to preach the word of God, to walk with Jesus. Just a closer walk with Jesus is what we all want. Then follow this. For sin shall not be your master because you are not under the law any longer. 
you are under grace. You no longer have to try to live up to the law. You no longer have to try to live a life of perfection. You just admit that you can't do it alone. Admit you're a sinner. Admit that Jesus Christ paid the price for your sins and you're saved. And then you live for Christ. Sin shall not be your master any longer because you are not under the law. You're under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? By no means. God forbid. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone to obey him as a slave, you are slaves to the one to whom you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. I'd rather be a slave to obedience to God than a slave to sin in the mortal body. This is great. He says, I put this, verse 19, I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves. Just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. You didn't have to worry about it. The devil didn't have to worry about uh, you being saved because you weren't saved. And, and you couldn't touch God. You couldn't speak to God. You couldn't be in the presence of God because you were still in sin. Once you are saved and Jesus washes your sin white as snow with the blood of his sacrifice, then God can see you as righteous in the eyes of Christ and in the eyes of God Almighty. What benefit did you reap then at that time from the things that you are now ashamed of? Anything? Any benefit? Maybe a momentary glory or glee? But it's fading. God's righteousness is everlasting. But now that you have been set free because those things result in death, you have now become slaves to God. The benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. Now, here comes the key verse in Romans 6 that ties all this together from Romans chapters 3 four, five, and six. All of this about sin and death and forgiveness and righteousness is right here in Romans chapter six, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's Romans chapter six. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages of sin is death. Now, when you work, you earn your wages. Wages aren't a gift. You can't just show up at McDonald's with your hand out and they give you money. But if you get a job and you work an eight-hour shift and another eight-hour shift, at the end of the week, you get a paycheck. Those are your wages. You earned those wages. What have we earned with our life? Being slaves to sin, being live, living in the natural? We've earned death, eternal separation from God. That's what we've earned by being sinners. But the gift, we didn't earn it, it's freely given. The gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Eternal life, forever life. God loves you, and he wants to forgive you for all your sins. If you've already accepted Christ and you're saved, praise God. Praise God. I am, you're my brother. You're my sister. I will see you in eternity. We will all live in eternity in the presence of God Almighty, and all of this garbage and evil and sin and despair that we are experiencing here now in this life, especially as we head into these terrible, terrible end times. God will be placing us in his glory for all eternity. The wages of sin is death, eternal separation from God. But the gift of God 
freely given, free gift here. And you know what? On Christmas, we give gifts. On birthdays, we give gifts. And people say it's better to give than receive. Hey, we love to get gifts, especially something we like and we're going to use or it's really wonderful. We loved it. But there's no better joy than the joy of someone watching someone they love open a gift that you know is going to bless their life. Imagine God looking at us on the day of our salvation when we open that free gift of eternal life. He is filled with so much joy. The Bible even tells us that there is more celebration in heaven over one sinner who repents and gets saved and receives this free gift of eternal life than over 99 righteous people that don't need to get saved. God loves you. God loves you. And he wants you in his family, but he will never force you to join his family. That's Romans chapter 6. God loves you. So do I. I'll see you right back here next Sunday for Romans chapter 7. And that's another good chapter where I do what I don't want to do and what I want to do, I don't do. Who will help me with this? Romans chapter 7. Next week. Share the message, share the message, share the message, share the word of God, share the love of God, share the joy that comes from the love of God. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye for now.